Hello everyone, nice to see you again. Well, it's been a long time coming, but I've finally got round to doing a full review on the Miele Hybrid Vacuum Cleaner. I unboxed this machine quite some time ago and used it a bit and then packed it away and never gave it a second thought. But I thought I'd better get it out, whip it out and give you a full demo of this model, which I believe now has been discontinued. You can't buy this well, you can still buy it, um, it's still available in some stores. It averages about £500 for the few shops I've seen it at for a brand new one, which is a lot of money. You can get the Miele S8 Unique for less than that. So, this compact but fairly heavyweight cleaner is rather unique in the world of vacuum cleaners because it's a hybrid. And basically what that means is it can be used as a conventional mains operated vacuum cleaner. It's got an 1800 watt motor, so it functions just the same as any compact Miele cylinder vacuum. What makes the hybrid different, it has lithium iron batteries built in. So you can actually unplug the machine and providing it's fully charged, you can have up to 20 minutes of use without having a cord. That's useful if you need to clean an area where you can't reach with a power socket if it's somewhere inaccessible. Uh, if you want to clean your car, it's always useful. And if you've got lots of stairs to clean, it's handy not having a lead to restrict you while you're cleaning. But I'll show you the features, I'll show you the machine working as a mains operated vacuum and also show you it on battery power. This is what the Miele Hybrids control panel looks like when it's charging. This flashing light means that the battery is almost fully charged. As you can see, there's one, two, three, four orange lights across the panel here. And when the machine is fully charged, obviously all orange lights will remain on. Because it's flashing on the last orange light, it means it's almost charged. And when it's fully charged, that flashing light will turn to a static, always on light. So this is a machine plugged in, but switched off. As you're using the machine as on battery power, these lights do go down until eventually it goes down to the last light and when you're nearly out of power, that will turn red. If for any reason the battery overheats, and I've not experienced that so far, there's a little triangular warning light that will come on, so you need to unplug the machine and let it cool down for a bit. So apart from this, we've got some pretty standard controls. You've got your stepless speed control from minimum up to a maximum. This is different to the S4 model. This is based really on an S4 shell. The standard S4 model Miele have a stepped control with indications on what setting Miele suggests for minimum, which is for your delicates and your curtains, right up to maximum for your hard floors. But with this one, it's infinitely variable you don't have any settings as such, you have to use your judgement. Most people will use it on maximum all the time. You've also got your foot operated on off switch here and your foot operated automatic cord rewind. So even though it's charging now, I can still use the machine because it's plugged in, I can use it as a mains powered vacuum. And the advantage of that is as well is I'm, as I'm using the machine, it will still be charging the battery. So you don't have to have the machine off to charge it, you can be using the machine as normal and the battery is getting topped up as you're cleaning. So I'll just turn the machine on and vary the power. So that's on minimum, that's using the mains. That's about medium power. and right up to maximum there. Again, with these the YouTube videos, it is hard to judge the sound level of vacuum cleaner, but it is pleasantly quiet, this machine, especially on a lower setting, but even on maximum, it doesn't have a high-pitched scream. It's quite a pleasant sounding machine. While we're waiting for the battery to fully charge, I'll just show you some other bits on this cleaner. We've got a standard Miele bag check indicator here. This little window will progressively turn orange as the bag fills. It will also turn orange if there's a blockage in the hose or the filter is blocked. So to access the bag, 
You just open it up here. It takes the FJM red collar bags. This one is quite full, but I'm still going to continue the demo even though this bag is chocker block. They just lift out like that. Um, pretty standard Miele, well I'm saying it's standard, but it's the Miele high clean bag. Now these are very, very good. That's quite full. There's still quite a bit of capacity in there, but there'll be no real dramatic loss of suction with the high clean bag. You've got a nice sealant silicon type ring around there to keep the dust in and you've got this little flap that closes automatically when you open the bag door so there's no exposure to dust unlike a bagless vacuum so for people with allergies a bagged cleaner especially a bagged cleaner with a very good bag like the Miele bags that's probably the way I would go because no matter how good the filtration is on a bagless vacuum cleaner you are still exposed to the dust every time you empty it so that's the bag anyway and as I say I'll keep that bag in for the demo. We have a standard Miele air clean filter that comes with every pack of four bags so after you've used a box of bags pop a new filter in and this one it's got fairly black now that's black from the carbon dust from the motor it's not dust as such it's the carbon dust that the electric motor produces but on this side it's still fairly clean it's not too bad at all even a normal air clean filter combined with a high clean bag is a very good filtration system so that just fits into there and the bag just slots back in at the front make sure we tuck the bag all the way into the compartment and then we can close the bag door this is the back of the machine where you've got your three very well made, very durable swivel casters. This is where the battery is as well, lithium ion technology. When you first get the machine, there's this little switch here, it will be in the off position. It prevents the machine from turning on when it's um, being transported. So you just need to turn that to the on position and that will activate the battery. You've got a parking bracket as well for storage on the side there. So when you put your machine away in the cupboard, let's take the hose off, the main carpet floor nozzle will fit neatly on the side there. That also helps when you're carrying the machine, it just keeps that securely positioned. You've also got a further parking bracket at the back here. So if you need to pause your vacuuming, you can just pop it in there instead of just throwing it onto the floor like you normally would or just propping it up against some furniture you can actually pop it in there and it holds it in nice, secure, nice and secure so when you carry on with your cleaning you just lift off and then get back to your housework while I'm on the subject of the head this is the main carpet and floor nozzle you get with the Miele Hybrid it's a good quality nozzle and it moves fairly easily across the floor got a nice large smooth running wheel at the back which does help with the mobility metal sole plate so it does glide nicely over the carpet two litter pickers you can replace those Miele do sell those as a spare part if you need to replace those and it's got side suction channels at either side and a nice deep suction groove you've got your foot operated switch so it's brushes up the carpets and when you want to go onto your hard floors you press that down and then the brush comes down for your hard floor surfaces. We've also got the standard Miele click fitting here with the little switch so all the tools, well not all the tools, the main tools, the small tools are friction fit but the tube and the main nozzle fits using this action so it comes off and on easily, you just have to click it in place and that ain't going nowhere until you press that to release. So unlike some cleaners, and um, Henry cleaners um, prone to this, cleaners that have a friction fit, the tubes can often get jammed together and it's very hard to separate them. Having some sort of switch system like this and on SIBO cleaners, it just makes things easier. It's still nice and secure but having a little latch on there makes it easy to remove when you need to take the nozzle off. You also get a standard Miele telescopic extension tube. Again on this side you've got the, 
the switch which connects to the hand grip which is here. This is a standard curved hand grip you find on most Miele vacuums. Some Mielers have a different style of hand grip but most entry levels and mid-range models tend to have this sort of hand grip. It's nice enough, it's comfortable to hold. You've got suction relief valve here if you want to release the suction quickly and you don't want to adjust the motor power using the dial here you can open that and adjust it if you need to clean your curtains or anything and again your tube clicks in there nice satisfying click easy to remove and easy to attach you can attach any of the small cleaning tools either onto the end of the extension tube or you can fit them directly onto the end of the hand grip here are the cleaning tools and actually stored on the hose. So there's this little bracket here, take it off. So that holds your three small cleaning tools. So you've got a dusting brush here which has got a, an adjustable neck. So you can use it in that angle or vary the angle or straighten it out like that. So that's good for doing your blinds, your shelving, your tops of skirting boards, that sort of thing. The next nozzle we get is crevice tool, a little bit short really. Miele do longer versions if you want to buy an optional longer tool and they do a very long one as well, a flexible tool which is ideal for doing by the side of your fridge or something. So it gets into um, lots of nooks and crannies. That one's adequate for most people, most uses, but it is a bit short. And the final tool, the small tool that you get is the general purpose upholstery, stair, curtain nozzle. That's probably the small tool you'll use the most and that is ideal for doing your upholstery. So say your stairs. It's got two litter pickers either side. Little suction channels as well so it should get quite close to the edge. So that's the tools you get with the machine. The main carpet and floor nozzle, your crevice tool, your purpose nozzle, your dusting brush, your bracket to hold the small tools, your metal telescopic tube and of course your flexible hose and both ends of the hose, this is the end you plug them into the machine, both ends of the hose swivel 360 degrees which means it shouldn't get tangled up. You've also got a little release here, there's two catches either side, you just squeeze those together and then you can pull the curved handle off. This is useful if you get a blockage. It's easy to see if the hose has become blocked. I've never had a blockage in any Miele cleaner and you shouldn't in normal use it shouldn't block up. It's only if you try picking up things that are too big or you accidentally pick up a sock or something you might need to open that out and have a look. One little feature as well that uh, most people don't notice is this it's a metal, metal strip here. Now that, some people are susceptible to electric shocks when using a vacuum cleaner. Static builds up, especially if you're using the machine on a synthetic carpet, a man-made fibre. Static can build up and you, you might get a little shock. Providing you always keep your hand in contact with the metal part here, that shouldn't happen. Any static electricity is discharged as you're using the machine and you won't feel it, you won't get that nasty little shock. That's something I've not experience for a long long time so um, it's not a very common occurrence I wouldn't have thought but it's there, Miele have just thought of that and they've put this just for people who do tend to generate a lot of static electricity. Well as we can see now from the illuminated panel on the Miele hybrid the battery is fully charged so it should give around 20 minutes it varies 15 to 20 minutes of constant use. Now it can last a little bit longer if you turn down the power. This suction control works when the machine's in a mains mode, it also works when it's in battery mode. Bearing in mind though that even on maximum power, if you've got it in battery mode, on maximum power it uses around 600 watts of electricity. So maximum power in battery will not match maximum power when using it for mains use. But it's still more than adequate, it's better than most, probably most handheld cleaners on the market. When it's on maximum power using the battery, it is still a very efficient vacuum cleaner. Anyway, I'm going to throw down some filth 
and we'll see how the Miele Hybrid copes using mains power and the standard floor head. Well, here we have my usual sort of mess. It's been thrown down on various carpets many times, this dust. I bet it's wondering, when is it actually going to end up in the dustbin? Well, I'm not sure myself. But anyway, in this, we have a mixture of paper cuttings, dog hair, there's flour, there's sugar, there's probably couscous, normally is. There's some carpet fibres, general household dust. So basically, all the dirt that I pick up using the various vacuum cleaners in my tests, I keep and recycle. So here it is. Now the paper clippings, my paper shredder went kaput recently and instead of buying a new paper shredder, I just use a pair of scissors now. All I do is cut out any relevant things on my bills, like my address and any numbers. Just cut them up with a pair of scissors and uh, I have no need for a paper shredder anymore. So, there we go. So I'm going to test the meal hybrid using mains power going back and forth, once forward, once back, on full power using the standard nozzle. Now I'm not expecting this to perform as well as an upright cleaner. I've not yet come across a vacuum cleaner, a cylinder vacuum, a straight suction vacuum that has, has made a complete clean sweep. It needs some sort of agitation like a turbo brush, a power nozzle or an upright cleaner with a, a rotating brush to really have a dramatic effect when you're first going over. But again, this is an extreme example, but it will just give an idea of how well this hybrid cleaner performs. I'm going to do it with the mains power on one stripe, and then the stripe next to it, I'll see how it, how it performs using the battery power alone. We'll see what sort of difference there is. So first test is mains power, and I'm using the machine on its maximum setting. So. I'll do it down this side first, and let's see how we go. Well, I went a bit fast initially because when I first turned the machine on I had trouble starting it, so it did go a bit quicker than I'd normally go. But, yes, it's left what I expected it to have left. It's left the hairs. But most of the other stuff, it's all the paper has been removed. The dust has been removed. It's just mainly the hairs that are still on the carpet. Apart from these larger tufts, when you look closer, I can actually see dark areas where the pet hair has remained. But I'm sure a few more times back and forward, it would probably remove the rest of that. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to choose this dirty path and I'm going to do the same thing back and forwards but this time I'm going to unplug the Miele Hybrid and see how it performs using the battery only. Right, so I've unplugged the machine and I've moved it just so you can see that the plug is here so I haven't got the machine plugged in so there's no trickery, no jiggery pokery. This is the plug and the plug will remain just there where you can see it while I'm going to go back and forth over another area of this dirty carpet. Again it's on maximum power but because it's using the lithium ion battery it's not going to be as powerful as using it mains powered. But we'll see anyway, we'll see what sort of job it does. Now, as far as the surface litter, the majority of the dust, certainly all the bits of paper, it's picked those up. But, like in mains power, but it's obviously done worse because the suction is lower when using the battery, it's not going to perform anywhere near as, it sh as well as mains powered. So it has left the pet hair, and I expected it would, but it left the pet hair in mains power. But there is a difference, certainly it is better on mains power than it is on battery power.
This shot makes it a bit easier to see the results. This is the path that was cleaned using the Miele Hybrid in mains mode and this is the path that was cleaned using the hybrid in battery mode. So obviously you can see that even in mains it's not really dealt very well with the pet hair, not just one forward and back pass. If you were to continue going over the carpet, even in battery mode, it probably would get out most of it. But even some of the mains powered mealers that I've used, straight suction, they do tend to struggle with pet hair. They tend to roll it up into little cigar shapes and you're forever going back and forth to try and remove it. But for people with pets, I would recommend an upright cleaner or at least a suction cleaner that's got a turbo brush or even better, a motorized turbo nozzle. But what Miele have, and again, this is not really widely available anymore. None of the Miele vacuum cleaners currently offer it as standard. This is the Acunova rechargeable head. A very good idea, but sadly in practice, it didn't work very well. It picks up very well when it's being used, but the battery doesn't then tend to last very long at all. It's probably because it's a NICAD battery, it's old fashioned technology. If this was to be relaunched using, instead of this NICAD battery here, if you were, the Miele were to introduce a lithium ion battery, then it probably would be a very good addition to get. Anyway, I'm going to show you, I've got a middle stripe here, as you can see. So on battery power only, so battery power using the suction and battery powered for this Acune overhead. I'm going to go over the middle and we'll see how this head performs. So again, I've positioned the vacuum cleaner so you can see that it's not plugged in. That's the cord inside the machine. And I'm going to use the Acunova head, which again isn't plugged in because it uses a battery. You need to switch the head on first. A little green light comes on. A red light comes on when the battery needs to be charged. Also, if you get anything caught in the brushes, it will switch off and the red light will come on. So again, maximum power on the vacuum. I'm going to go forwards and back through the middle using the Acun overhead and we'll see what an improvement it makes over the straight suction nozzle. Now, I think you'll agree that that is a huge difference between the other nozzles even using just battery power on the vacuum and the rechargeable head it has done a far better job now i did notice these, this battery has been charging but it's already showing the red light was coming on which means it is the battery needs recharging soon but i found even when i had this brand new the red light used to come on fairly soon after i started using the machine but in practice, the head would still continue to be operational for about 15 minutes or so, even with the red battery light on. So I don't know, that's always been the case ever since I've had the Acune overhead. The Acune overhead is very similar to the mains powered Miele head. They do a smaller power head. They do another power head as well, a bigger one. But it's basically the same, apart from the fact it uses a battery. So it's a little bit heavier because of the battery, but it has more or less the same brush roll. You can remove this base plate here using a coin. You just unscrew that. This base plate comes off. You can just remove the brush roll if you need to clean hairs from it. So it's quite an effective little nozzle. It's just a shame that the charge doesn't seem to last very long at all. Also, to save battery power, the head will automatically switch off. If there's no suction running through the head, it won't turn on. Also, when the head is stationary, it switches off automatically as well. So the brushes will only rotate when there's suction going through the head and when it senses that you're moving the head back and forth. So whenever you stop, the head stops automatically. So that does help preserve the battery. Right, I'm going to clear up the rest of this mess using the Acune overhead and the Miele hybrid on battery power alone.
Well, that was the Miele Hybrid being demonstrated. Now, I did make that video quite a while ago, and in the meantime, I sold the vacuum before I could do the summing up. So I thought, well, I'll just upload it anyway, it won't matter, it's, it's something, you know, to upload to my channel. It's got some good content, possibly, but I'll just leave it unfinished. And then I thought, well, no, I can't. Yes, Beethoven, Schubert, they had their unfinished symphonies. I'm sure even Van Gogh left a few of his paintings not coloured in. But, being the perfectionist that I am, I couldn't leave you with an unfinished video. I couldn't just stop the video where it was about to stop, leaving you wondering, is that it? Where's Roger's summing up? I live for his summing up and conclusion. Well, now I know you don't, but for me, I have to do a summing up at the end of a video. And even though I don't have the vacuum cleaner to show you, I can talk about it, can't I? Is it a good vacuum? Well, yes, like the majority of Miele vacuum cleaners, it's a good machine. It's discontinued now. You can still buy it, some websites, but it averages about £500, and it's a lot of money when you can get a perfectly good Miele mains powered cylinder vacuum cleaner for less than £200. Now, this machine here, this is an old machine I've had quite a while. It's an S based on the S4. In fact, the S4 is the design that the Miele Hybrid was based on, so it's basically the same shape as this, although I believe the Miele Hybrid was a little bit taller because it incorporated the battery pack underneath, so it was a bit thicker here, and obviously because of the battery it made it heavier. As far as performance goes, there's not a lot to choose between this mains powered S4 and the Hybrid. They're equivalent really when you use it for mains. They both had 1800 watt motors in mains operation. I'd only go for the hybrid if you really, really need the cordless function of that machine. If you don't need the cordless function, then like I say, there are newer Miele's out now that are much cheaper and will do the job for you. So summing up, yes, get the hybrid, it's a good machine, but only get it if you need to clean somewhere where you cannot plug the machine in and you desperately have to have it. Saying that, Cordless seems to be the in thing at the moment. A lot of manufacturers are bringing out cordless vacuum cleaners, so who knows? Miele may be bringing out a cordless vacuum in their range anytime soon. Who knows? Obviously, Dyson and Vax are the main players in the UK. I think even Bissell have cordless machines. There are other manufacturers, so cordless is the buzzword for vacuums at the moment. So wait, wait and see what Miele bring. Right, so that's the end of the video. Before I go, I'll just um, tell you what's coming up on my channel, iBasiac, in the next few weeks and months. Well, since I've got this vacuum cleaner out, even though it's an old model, I will still do a full demo and review of this top-of-the-line Miele S4780 for you. So that will be coming up for any of you Miele fans. I will also be reviewing this. I unboxed this a couple of weeks ago on my channel. Or was it last week? Who knows? This is the Hoover A2, or the Hoover Idol, or as I'm going to call it, the Hoover Idol. It really is quite a poor vacuum cleaner. It's one of the newer energy saving machines. It's got an A-class energy rating, so it's only 700 watts. And Hoover claim it has A-class hard floor cleaning performance. I think carpet cleaning performance is a D for this, so not very good. I found it in use, I've just used it normally. I found it pretty poor at most jobs. There's a couple of things it's okay at, but for most jobs around the house, not very good. And when I throw my bag of filth down, which I will do for my test, I'll be throwing my bag of filth down on the living room carpet. I'll also be throwing a lot of mess down in the kitchen and testing this machine. I can predict now, although I've not used it yet for such an extreme test, I can predict it's not gonna do very well. This machine, not a new design, it's based on the Hoover Zarian. I've unboxed and reviewed a Hoover Zarian quite a while ago on my channel. If you'd like to see that, if you just click above my hand, that will take you directly to the review of the Zarian. What else have we got coming up? Well, another thing we've got coming up is this little goblin. No, it's not a euphemism. This is what it's called, it's a goblin, there we go. A Goblin Stick Vac, very cheap this was, it uh, was on offer at my local Asda Walmart for £25. And as you can see, I wonder where they took their design styling from, I wonder who they copied there, can you guess? But, for £25 I thought, well, 
It's a tenth of the price of a Dyson. It's a mains powered machine at 600 watts. And I'll be taking that little cleaner through its paces for you. It's not bad. But it's not very good either. But anyway, a full unboxing of this will follow on my channel very soon. And then, of course, the review will follow that. Now, what else have we got coming up for you? I know I've unboxed the Aquamaster, the Hoover Aquamaster, quite a while ago. I still haven't used it, but that will be coming up on my channel as soon as I can. Also, the Bissell HydroClean Complete, that will be coming up too. I've got another unboxing of a, another Hoover Free Motion cleaner. This one's bagged. I believe I've done a couple of Free Motions on my channel. I've done a, a little unboxing or a little review of the bagged Free Motion and a bagless one. This is a Hoover bagged free motion. Just got, I've had to make some notes. I've told you about that, that, that. I'm going to say, I'm going to say something to you now that some of you may be shocked by. I'm going to say the D word. Can I say it? Focus. On this channel, in the next week, in the next few weeks, couple of months, you may well be seeing me unboxing and reviewing a new Dyson vacuum cleaner. Yes, I've had my falling out with James. He hurt me very badly. But through extensive therapy, I've learned to forgive and forget. And I'm going to try one of his later vacuum cleaners. Now, I don't know which one it is yet. I haven't decided. It depends what's on offer, what I can get. It may be a DC40, might be a DC41, might be a DC39. I think it'll be a mains one anyway. I'm not going to the cordless ones yet, but it will be a mains powered Dyson I'll be unboxing and reviewing. I can't guarantee it. But if you want to see that, please subscribe. Just click here, please. You'll be taken to my channel, iBasiac, and then just click on the button in the middle and subscribe, and you'll get a little note in your inbox when I upload something new. So if you'd like to subscribe, that would be very nice. Also, for you subscribers, some of you more loyal than others. I know I've had a few floaters. You've subscribed and then you've gone away. I don't know why. And then you've come back, because I do know when you do that, you know. Because mm, I get a message in my inbox telling me who subscribed and, um, oh, I've got a frog. <coughs> Sorry about that, I've got a frog in my throat. Ugh. I could say I swallowed an umbrella earlier. Some of you will know that reference, Victoria Wood fans. Oh, I wish I had. Now, what's the saying? I do, do beg your pardon. Oh yes, subscribers. Okay, whether you want to subscribe or not, it's fine. It's nice to have you on board. If you like to subscribe, if you like the nonsense that I show you, please subscribe, and of course you'll never miss a second of this rubbish. Also though, a special extra added benefit for subscribers only. This is something I'm toying with, so it's not set in stone yet, but I'm thinking of doing subscriber unique content. So when I upload something, I can actually say, this is for subscribers only. And the first thing I'm planning on doing is like a question and answer session. So hopefully in a couple of weeks, I'll put a video up asking for your input, asking for suggestions, questions, that sort of thing. If you answer them on the video, I will be able to see them all together on that same video and then I'll do a new video which I believe I'm going to do it on the first of the month, upload it on the first of every month, subscribers only, it'll be question, answer, whatever you want. Okay, I can't guarantee I'll be able to answer every question. If it's about a vacuum cleaner, I'll certainly answer it. If it's anything to do with other things, I'll answer it if it's not impertinent, if you're not being rude. Um, but again, I might not tell the truth when I answer it. But if it's about a vacuum, I will give you my honest opinion based on my many, many years. As you can see from the lines and the belly, I've had quite a lot of experience in vacuum cleaners. Well, not in them, that sounds a bit perverted. Um, using vacuum cleaners, buying, using, demonstrating, even selling them at, at one point. So I do know a fair bit. Years have some benefit. They give you the benefit of wisdom, kids. Don't forget that. Some of you need to learn that lesson. But I was the same. I was the same as a lot of you. I see myself in a lot of you and I cringe when I see some of the comments. But anyway, I'll, I'm getting too old for arguing. Well, I don't argue. So that's it. I've finished. So please, please subscribe here.
I've only just learned how to do that. Isn't it fantastic? There, so just click on that. It, I don't know if it works on all devices. It might not work if you've got the app on your iPad. But anyway, if you see a little box here that says subscribe here, exclamation mark, there. It'll be here somewhere. Please subscribe. Anyway, until the next time, which will be next Friday, I'll upload something new. But of course, Monday and Wednesday, there will be some sort of vacuum demo from QVC or Ideal World or somewhere. Something. Until then, it's goodbye, and I'll see you very, very soon.